I hated golf. When I was a kid, action sports were everything to me. I dirt biked, I played football, basketball, baseball, everything. But a sport where you take clubs and hit a little ball into a little, I, it just didn't make sense to me. And it had never been introduced to me in a way that made me want to go out and play. Well, that was until my brother dragged me and my best friend out to a local golf course to play nine holes. The first golf course I ever played at was the worst golf course I've ever played at. <laughs> It was a nine hole crabgrass desert style golf course. There was no water in the fairways, no water on the greens. They were more like browns to be completely honest. I mean, it, it, was, it was sort of an apocalyptic style golf course local to us New Englanders. But that's where I fell in love with the game. My brother had me using a child's golf club set and I was 14. I grew a foot that year and he had me hunched over, hitting with these clubs, and I don't even think it was a full set, it was probably half, half of what a normal set has, and I was chunking it up the fairway all day long, until I got to the ninth hole, and I can picture it now. It was an elevated tee box, hitting down to a narrow fairway, I'm hitting with this children's club, it's too small for me, but I absolutely croaked one. I remember that feeling is what carried me into my passion and love for golf. And that's, that's where it all started for me. I saved up for months just to buy a used pair of golf clubs. So some friends introduced me to the high school golf team and I wanted to make tryouts so bad. So day after day, I practiced and practiced, but I could not shake my slice. So I reached out to a local golf pro and I started training and training and training leading up to tryouts. Regardless of where my head was at, I felt like I had a good chance of making the team. And even if I didn't, I was gonna give it everything I had. The golf team took 25 golfers. I finished 26. <laughs> so all my friends made the golf team and I didn't. I mean, that was, that was my first lesson in golf, right? Is I started out, I was all pumped up. I worked hard. I put in the hours, put in the time, put in the money even, but I lost. I didn't even care about being on the team. What I really cared about was getting better and improving. I went after school every single day to the golf course that they were playing at and I just played and I played with them and I played against them. So after a whole summer of training leading into the next golf season, I was ready. And I played the best rounds that I could possibly play. I made the team by a landslide and I was absolutely loving it. Golf was addicting. So one day on the team, me and a couple of my friends are playing in a match. And I look over at my buddy, Kyle, who we call Freight Train, and he was doing something kind of disgusting. So I look over at Kyle and he's spitting on his golf club. Mushing it in with a brush. And I, I, I'm not kidding. He takes his shirt and wipes the face clean and just, it's the most disgusting thing ever. So I looked at Kyle and I just thought to myself, something's got to exist out there that does this better. So a couple weeks later, Kyle calls me up and we decided we wanted to build something from the ground up. So here we are, a few kids in high school, trying to invent a new product from scratch. So Kyle and I recruited our good friend, Alex. We went in the back room of my house and we decided we were gonna come up with some type of all-in-one golf club cleaning kit. So we made prototypes out of, the, out of common kitchen gear, scrub pads, brushes, brass, anything we could get our hands on that we thought would clean a club really well. Because ultimately the way we cleaned our clubs at that point was going into the sink with kitchen tools and just spending 45 minutes of doing it when we got home. A year later, we had 5,000 caddy cleans sitting in a warehouse ready to be sold. Guys, can we get some light on here? <laughs> we had no sales experience whatsoever. So I wanna ask you at home, if you had a brand new golf product that no one had ever heard of, where would you go to start your selling experience? You might think that you would go to pro shops across the country, right? Because there's so many of them. We had to learn that lesson the hard way. We went to these pro shops, they took us in, 
But people don't buy products from pro shops. They buy booze and granola bars and gloves. So here we are sitting on 5,000 units of inventory at 15 years old, and we were not able to sell any of these things. I'm gonna be honest, I was sick to my stomach. Caddy Clean was not selling well, and at 15 years old, to be honest, it was almost too much to handle. I remember trying to get guidance from my father and trying to work with the team. But when you don't have sales, there's no momentum. And without momentum, you get stuck in the mud. I felt like I was failing my father. I felt like I was failing my friends. I felt like I was really failing everybody that had believed in us throughout this whole process. You know, that kind of path and those kind of emotions, they're, they bring you down. For me, that was kind of a low point in my life up to that point. So what do you do when you've reached the bottom? Truthfully, you start over. So the summer of graduating high school, I decided it was time to go all in. That summer, we did really good engaging with our consumer and learning more and more about where they come from, what they do, who they are. We were selling one unit at a time and things were steady, but they weren't sustainable. We needed to find a way to build a recipe to break out. We needed something else. So our attitude shifted once we made it to the PGA show held in Orlando, Florida. So you gotta picture it. By now, I'm probably 18 years old. I walk into this building and it is no lie a square mile of all the most amazing golf products and golf professionals that you've ever seen. At the show, we managed to network with major retailers. The Golf Channel featured Caddy Clean, which was unbelievable. And on top of it, our big break came when a website called The Gromit picked us up and decided to start selling our products. When we left the show, we felt like we were on top of the world. The momentum had completely changed and we were on the up. The Caddy Clean launched online and sold like crazy. Okay, so fast forward. Now we're at Christmas time. Real Simple Magazine picks up Caddy Clean and puts us in the Christmas buying guide. I think we had 10 people fulfilling orders out of the warehouse we were shipping out of, and that still wasn't enough. It wasn't just the sales that felt good, it was the confirmation that we weren't crazy. This morning we are joined by Joshua Macari, a student at Quinnipiac University. He just won top honors for his Caddy Clean. Let's welcome him in this morning. This is an awesome invention. You know, When you come out with a new product like this that's never been done, it's there's no place in the market for it, so you have to create it. And to see how many people were buying the Caddy Clean was all we needed to confirm that there was value in the idea. So we paid off all our debt, but we did not turn a profit on Caddy Clean. Then a huge opportunity landed when Kyle, one of the co-founders and I, decided to enter into a national competition called eFest. This competition was no joke. It was started and run by the CEO of Best Buy. And the first place prize was 100,000, second place 70, and third place was $30,000. So Caddy Clean qualified as a top finalist for this competition. Kyle and I were about to head out to Minneapolis, Minnesota. So it's the morning of the plane flight. Kyle and I show up to our advisor's office. We get in the car, we pack up the car, we get in, and he just starts driving. He doesn't ask me to put in the GPS. He doesn't, like, there's no communication on that. And I think after a while of driving, I asked, how far are we from the, from the airport? And he looked over at me and he had no idea. Ooh. So I plug in the GPS while well, we're 25 minutes past the airport. So we're about to miss the flight. This is the one of the worst days of my life. So it turns out we drove almost 25 minutes past the airport. We get back to the airport. We have 10 minutes to get on this flight, but the staff will not let us try to get on this plane. So we sold our tickets in an attempt to buy new tickets for another plane. Guess what? There's tornadoes going on across the country and they canceled all the rest of the flights for the next two days. The universe did not want us going to this competition. So we missed eFest. It was a massive blow. Momentum slowed down after and Caddy Clean sort of took a background role in my life. 
I kind of took some time away to focus on college and just try to be present in the moment. And for me, with the momentum having slowed and having gone through so much with Caddy Clean, I was questioning what's the future of this and kind of like, where do I take this and what do I do? Mom, if you're watching this, I am very sorry. I skipped a lot of classes in college, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. So when I was in school, I used to drag every single one of my friends out to the golf course, day in and day out. Didn't matter what, about classes. I mean, truthfully, I wasn't a bad student. I was a good student. I got good grades. I even made dean's list a couple times. But the reality was my learning took place outside the classroom. So if I couldn't get myself to go to class, there was only one place I was going. And that was right to the golf course with every one of my friends, barefoot, music on, that's my game. That's how I play and that's how I enjoy it. So the same guy who made me miss eFest actually became my mentor all throughout my college experience. So we went back to the drawing board. I worked with my mentor for over two years to develop this golf brand. For me, it was all about playing my game. It was all about how do I enjoy golf and what does it mean to me? To me, golf is as much about competing against myself and overcoming mental obstacles as it is about playing with friends and family out on the golf course. That's what I love about golf, is that it's just like life in the sense that if you go into a hazard or you don't hit the shot you wanna hit, you always have that next shot of greatness. Boom, Omada Golf was born. Omada Golf is the culmination of everything that the game has given me over the years and everything I've experienced. So after two years, it dawned on me that I wanted to create a brand that was for everyone. It doesn't matter how good you are, what your handicap is, or where you're from. The reality is, is that Omada was designed to bring all people together, much like sharing a meal. Through every leg of the story of, of Omada, there's people there. It's, it's, it's about the team, right? It was doing it with my friends, starting the business. It was going, joining the golf team with my friends. It was, you know what I mean? Like going to the PGA show with our team. That's why Omada, because golf is a, golf like life is a team effort. You can't do it alone. So Omada is the Greek word for team. I think it's time I introduce you to them. I'm Adam Corey. I am the camera operator and editor at Omada Golf. Uh, I'm not really a golfer. I think I've been golfing four times in my life. I used to borrow my mom's camcorder and just film everything in the house. I, I used to make like ghost hunting videos and just anything, anything I could film, I would film. Are you afraid of ghosts? Am I afraid of ghosts? <laughs> I don't know if I believe in ghosts. So you have to believe to be afraid? Yeah. Did you ever catch any? No. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I filmed the video on my mom's camcorder, I always throw it up on YouTube and you know, we love reading the comments on YouTube. People calling me greasy fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after that, after that, I kind of put film down for a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> flash forward uh, to high school. I'm making videos in my uh, school's film production club. And the videos we made got thousands of views and, and made waves around the school. And I realized like, wow, there's so much power in film and so much potential to influence and engage people. I took that philosophy and I kind of brought it into Omada. With Omada's videos and Omada's video content, what I want to do is engage people and influence people to be a part of the team and be a part of the Omada community. So I went to college, I went to Emerson College in Boston and I studied film. And then from there I got a job somehow at a radio station in Boston. And after a while I realized like, I don't want to spend my time doing radio for the rest of my life. So thankfully they fired me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. And eventually I hop on LinkedIn 
and I see that Josh, uh, this guy from high school that I never talked to, but somehow we were LinkedIn connections. And here I am, I work at Omada now. So when I got to Omada, me and Josh were producing video after video in this dark, dark office with blacked out curtains. The only light in the office was the light coming off the computer screen while I was editing. I mean, I'm telling you, my eyes are, are I can barely see out of my eyes right now because they are, they are burnt. My corneas are burnt. But thankfully we made it through that and now we have a bigger team. We got Andrew, we got Kevin, me and Josh, and Omada is here to bring it. <laughs> my journey to golf started simply as a caddy. I kind of fell in love with the job. I was making good money at the time, kind of started like eighth, ninth grade. We had some good times in the bag room. We kind of messed around more than we worked. Um, we got good tips though. I mean, I can clean a good club. I can clean them up nice. No caddy clean needed. <laughs> Freshman year of college, I'm walking in the cafeteria with one of my buddies. He goes, hey man, I want to sit over here with these guys? Like, these are my friends over here. I was like, yeah, sure, like, I'll meet these guys. Ends up being Josh Bakari, Andrew Colucci, coworkers to this day. We had this connection over golf where at school on the weekends, we found the time to go out and play, um, no matter the course, because we were around some crummy courses, but it wasn't even about the golf that was being played. It was just about hanging out, having a good time. So this is actually a good story, man. The, my buddy Tyler, he had this golf outing every summer that you know me and Josh played in. And it was one of the funnest days we've ever had. He says, hey, next year, no matter what, you guys are coming back, you're playing with us. And it turns out that the exact date of the outing, I had a big exam on. And you know, it was one of those decisions, devil on the right, you know, whatever is on the left. <laughs> Voices in my head saying, go, don't go. But you know, I ended up not going actually, which is like <laughs> so unfortunate. And I missed out on one of the best days, and it's like a regret I have to this day that I didn't just skip that test, make it up, whatever. Should have went. Moral of the story: skip the class and go play golf. It's <laughs> worth it. The memories are way more. The memories are worth it. I'll never forget this one moment where you know Josh stops by my house. He packed his whole car up, ready to get out of school, ready to go home. He stops by my house to say bye to all of us, and he, he throws this idea at me, like, "Hey, man." I'm gonna be in contact with you this summer. I got this idea about Omada Golf. And I didn't know what the heck he was talking about at first, but he called me over the summer. He was a man of his word. And I was a man of mine. I said, I'll answer that call and I'm, I'll be where I need to be. And that's kind of how we got rolling. I came up here one day in the summer, showed me the plans, showed me how everything was gonna work. And you know, here we are now. So my name's Andrew Colucci. I'm over here at Team Omada. So I met Josh actually in kindergarten, so we're about five years old, it's about 17 years ago. I walked up to him day one, I was like, hey Josh, wanna be my best friend? Boom, 17 years later, high school, middle school, grade school, college, we went everywhere together. Me and Josh go to college together over at Quinnipiac, you know, we meet Kevin. Every chance we got, we had, we were out there playing golf together. That was when I had fun playing golf. I wasn't trying to be the best golfer in the world, because I'm not. I was out there having fun. I graduated, and then I took this boring desk job, and it was great, I love the people there, but I looked myself in the mirror, and I was like, nope, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna be here in a year. And so I was driving to work on a Monday, I had a bad case of the Mondays. I'm driving to work and I called Josh, I'm like, Josh, I gotta talk to you tonight, man, when I get out of work, I, I just have to. Pretty much begged him to let me come work at Omada. And because of our relationship, it was simple. He, he knew that I had to be there and like, he knew I wanted to be there and I knew I wanted to be here. This is like a team, this is a family. This is exactly what I was looking for in my life. You know, my whole life I keep putting myself in these bad positions where I'm not happy. And now here it's like, oh my God, like, this is fun as hell, great team. You know, Adam's great, Kevin's great, Josh, I always knew he was gonna be great. You know, I, I have good faith in what we're doing here and I know it's gonna be awesome. I made so many f friends and relationships on the golf course. I still have those friends to this day and they all stem from going out and playing those crappy courses up in Connecticut, right? If golf gave that to me, you know, I would be a fool to not try to give that to other people and that's what this platform is all about. That's what Omada is all about is bringing people together on the golf course. Our mission at Omada is to try to bring that togetherness and friendship to you at home. And we're gonna do that through our content, through our products, 
and mainly through our community.